Charlie, you feel very strongly that this offense could be a top 10, maybe even a top five offense if they do what? Stay healthy. That's the number one. <laughs> Better than half of their starters have the word health, ne- health next yeah. to them when you t- the first thing you say about them. But w- where they got mismatches there, people can't cover. Charlie, I think they also got to run the football with Darius Geis, too. I mean, turn rookie around. Year. Rookie you, you calling oh, it right now? That's right. Rookie wow. Calling it right now? That was a surprise? Right now. You that's think he can win rookie Sure, why not? It? It's <laughs> August. I tell you one thing. If they can run the football, I think this team will be in good shape. Well, Darius Geis looking pretty good in training camp so far. Chris Thompson still trying to get fully comfortable coming off a broken leg. Uh, he did that last November. He believes it'll be a full year from the time he was injured until he feels like himself again, says he wants to get up to about 90%, and then he can be game ready. If you don't draft me, I'm going to give you your defense hell. I know you want to know about Geis, so I'm going to answer that question. And I'm going to try to keep it together while I'm here, too, but uh, it's just a tough situation, man. Um, just it, it hurts me. I saw he he came into the uh, facility with his brother yesterday, and his brother was crying. And it's just like, man, I, I hate to see my brother like that. And um, it's the same way with me, man. Like he like uh, man, I've been through a lot, and to just see him go down before the season even even got started, like. Before he can even get a taste of the field, he was he was already down and um, dang, man. Uh, it's just tough. Like I just hate to see any of my boys go down like that. And, uh, I'm gonna just I'm gonna stay with him and you know just make sure I help him um, keep his spirits up and. and to try to be the guy he's always been, you know, the guy that y'all, y'all have seen every day. But um, like I said, yesterday was like the first time I, I I saw him and I felt him like faking the happiness. And that's not something I want to see out of my guys. All I'm going to say to the fans is, you know, is either you're a ride or die fan or you're not. Stick with us all the way. Don't be one of those wishy-washy fans. Just stick with us. I, if you think the team done, you're just not a Redskins fan, you know. Um, I feel like I feel like um, real fans, you know, when a guy get hurt, guy gets hurt, you you just pick you just pick the team up, you know. You don't go point the finger at the coaching staff. You don't go punch, point finger at our training staff. You don't go point fingers at guys or even the team. If you're a true fan, be a true fan and fight for us to the long run. Warning: the following video contains strong language. If you do not want to hear it, please click off the video and come back next time. I can't fucking believe this, man. I am so tired of Redskins players telling us, the fan base, what to fucking do. You have one job. DJ Swanger is my favorite Redskin. Now that Kirk Cousins is gone, DJ Swanger is my favorite Redskin. But you don't fucking sit here and tell us, the fans, what to do. You don't tell us to be loyal. You have a job and you get paid a shit ton of money, millions of dollars to do it. You go out on the football field and you do your freaking job. You perform. And then when you're not on the football field, you shut your fucking mouth. You be quiet. And I understand. I completely understand. There's a a reporter sitting there asking you questions, trying to get certain answers. They're trying to get these answers from you. But you should be smart enough to deflect those questions. You should know what to say, what's appropriate and what's not appropriate to say. I am so fucking tired of this. It seems like ever since we drafted RG3, like we just have these players just mouthing off, just talking, saying whatever they want, saying inappropriate shit. I'm tired of it, dude. Uh, you're t- you you have to tell us to be loyal. Do you are do you understand that the average player is gonna be here what four fucking years? We're we're fans for life. All right. I I grew up a Redskins fan. I'm gonna be a Redskins fan no matter what. My entire life. You're here four fucking years or something, and you're sitting here telling me that I need to be loyal? That did do you just sit back and watch Bruce Allen get rid of just let our best quarterback we've had in twenty five fucking years go for nothing? And then traded one of our best young players, one of the best younger players in the NFL, for fucking <laughs> trade him just trade him away? Trade our future away? And you're sitting here telling us to be loyal? Do you think New England Patriot fans have to be told by their players to be loyal? I bet you New England uh, Patriots players, I bet they're tired as fuck of meeting uh, 
<clears throat> Patriot fans, and ha there's Patriot fans always telling them how good they are, and congratulations, and thank you, and da 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 da, and they want all these autographs and shit. I bet you they're tired of that shit. You know why? Because they perform. They have a fucking dynasty. How about you go out and you fucking perform? And then you want people to be loyal and, and all this and that. That'll come. How about you just do your fucking job and don't tell us what to do? I'm going to be here for, for life. It's our job as Redskins fans to put other Fairweather fans in check. That's our job. That's not your fucking job. Your job is easy. Go out there on the field, do your job, get that big paycheck, and go home. That's your job. I'm tired of these players talking about the fans, the people who pay your fucking salary, all right? I'm tired of that shit. It's getting annoying as fuck. Um, so, we got more injuries. Robert Davis is gone for the year. Uh, we had a tight end. What is this, like, three, already, it's not even a second preseason game, and we already have, like, three or four people out for the year, man. The I'm pretty sure the... The uh, fullback that we liked, that we saw last game, that we liked, I forget his last name, starts with some, uh, with a W or whatever. hes I'm pretty sure he's uh, got put on IR. I mean, dude. I liked Robert Davis, man. But he's out for the year. Um, something happened to him in practice. I liked Robert Davis. I liked when we drafted Robert Davis because when I was looking at his college uh, highlights and stuff like that, he reminded me a lot of like Anquan Bolden. He's physical. He will get physical with corners and just manhandle them and then go up and get the football and come down with it. I liked his tape. I liked the guy, but he didn't really he didn't really come uh, you know, he didn't really show up in the NFL yet. Uh he looked pretty good in our last preseason game. He had a couple good catches. You know, I I I do think uh Trey Quinn is a better all around receiver and I think he's you know, we're lucky it was it wasn't him. Um, but these injuries are, are really, uh, taking their freaking toll, man. They're taking their freaking toll. And, um, this team needs to, to, uh, sit here and, and they, they need to figure out what they need to do to win. And <clears throat> I, I know a lot of people don't want to hear about it, but, um, I guess let's just get right into the next thing, man. Uh, I've seen a lot of people say that they don't like, Rob Kelly, well, I have a news flash for you. Rob Kelly is the best running back on this freaking football team that's not named Chris Thompson, all right? And if you don't think so, I don't know what the hell is going through your mind. I've seen a lot of people doubt Rob Kelly. Do I Do I really have to, to just re make you remember the amount of times that we've seen Rob Kelly be handed the football and just already as soon as he's getting handed the football, he's just getting dove on by three different defenders in the backfield and somehow he throws these motherfuckers off his back and, is, and gets three yards. When he's been, he first got contacted by like six motherfuckers six yards behind the line of scrimmage and then he still gets three yards out of it somehow? Imagine this man with an open field. He's going to... I just don't understand, like, how people, is your attention span really that small that you cannot remember these plays? Rob Kelly is a beast. He's a beast, and he, he's, a, he's a traditional hard-nosed football player. He doesn't run his fucking mouth. He just puts his nose down and grinds. He's a grinder. And yeah, he, yeah, he had uh, injured ribs. Yeah, why? Because of what I just told you. Our, our offensive line can't fucking run block, all right? We all know it. We all know it. And yes, he's better than Darius Geis. You know why? Because he didn't tear his ACL after six runs. And I like Darius Geis. I like Darius Geis. And I don't want to be completely negative. I know there's a lot. Of, I've been making some more negative videos recently. I, I really do think Darius Geis can come back from this. I really hope he does. I really do. Um... But Bruce Allen, we drafted a running back who had known damage to his knee. The same knee he just blew out, all right? We even passed on him. The Redskins even passed on him and then came back. Do you really think a lot of the stuff that we heard uh, in the pre-draft was that, oh, Darius Geis has... 
Um, he has like a just off the field issues and personality issues. Have you seen the man since he's been here? He's been nothing but a joy to listen to, and he's been nothing. Everyone loves him. So do you really think it was just the character issues, or do you think it's he had some shit wrong with his knee? What do you? Which one do you think? Now this is all speculation. Do I know for sure? No, I don't. But I do know that I've heard other people talk about he's had damage to his knee done. So if that's known, I mean, we just drafted a dude who ran the ball six times, and his career might be over. And we spent a second round pick on him. And if you go back to uh, videos I made in the off season, we needed a wide receiver really bad, didn't we? We needed a wide receiver really bad. And do you know who I'd rather have more than Paul Richardson? Martavis fucking Bryant, like I said. And I don't forget where he went. Someone gave up a third round pick for Martavis Bryant. Martavis Bryant shits all over Josh Doxson. Martavis Bryant shits all over Paul Richardson. Are you kidding me? The only thing wrong with Martavis Bryant is that he wasn't getting along with the our, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers coaching staff. And hey, maybe a change of scenery, bringing him in here would help. But no, Bruce Allen, whoever's running this goddamn football team, doesn't know what they're doing. We could have given up a third-round pick for a dude who is vastly talented. Leaping everything we thought Josh Doxson was, I've seen Martavis Bryant do it. Just, he's fast as shit, will jump over motherfuckers and grab the football and come down with it. And let's lead right into the next thing. Another thing why I'm really tired of the Redskins and the coaching staff right now. We are sitting here. If we want to make, if we want to take the next step, if we want to, if we want to take this football team and make that next step, we we tell Josh Doxson, hey, you go over on the sideline and sit on the fucking bench, and you get Maurice Harris his fucking Gatorade or whatever he his preference, water or whatever. You be you go over there and get that for Maurice Harris, and Maurice Harris is starting on the fucking football team. If we really want to make that next step, Maurice Harris is a fucking starter on this football team. And Josh Doxson, until he proves that he can be reliable, until he can prove that he can make those catches that I've seen Maurice Harris make consistently, the key, consistently, yeah, we're playing Maurice Harris. That's what we should be doing. And this is, this is, a, this is, a, this is the issue. This happens all the time. This happens all the time. Do you remember Mac Brown? Do you remember Mac Brown? A dude who just shines. A dude who shows up. And in the bright lights, and yeah, sure, he showed up in the preseason games or whatever, but guess what? Each preseason game, it means way more than any college fucking football game. I don't care if it, whatever bowl it is, I don't give a fuck. These guys are showing up, trying to get their job for their ultimate dream job, to be in the NFL. And Mac Brown fucking shined all the goddamn time, and guess what? Where is he now? I don't fucking know. The Redskins let him go. We, were, we sat here and watched this man go beast mode all the fucking time just to let him go for no reason, and we wouldn't play him or whatever. Fish, Fish Smithson. The dude shined. I'm sorry, but I've seen him make plays. I've seen the guy. He's rangy as fuck. He's fast. He reminds me of Kaishan Jarrett, but guess what? He's not going to play. He's not going to make the team. He This or that, just uh, this or that, this or that, this or that. These, we have people who shine and show up and play and make plays, and they're not getting on the fucking football field. And, and this, is, this is what's holding us back. This is what's holding us back. Um, and also, uh, <clears throat> I saw Louis T's video um, talking about the Darius Geis thing, and, he, and he, the first thing that went into his mind is the same thing, that the first thing that went into my mind. All you Kirk naysayers... All the people who wanted Kirk Cousins to be gone, and you thought he were, wasn't worth a damn, and oh, we got a better quarterback, Alex Smith, this or that. Guess what? Now we don't have Darius Geis, right? We're running the same offense that Kirk Cousins had. Oh yeah, let's let's see how well Alex Smith is. Let's see what upgrade Alex Smith is. Yep, Alex Smith doesn't need a run game, right? Alex Smith doesn't need a defense, right? He's gonna be better than Kirk Cousins. Yeah, let's fucking see. All right, let's let's see what Alex Smith can do. Uh huh. Are you ready? Are you ready to see that shit? Are you ready to see Alex Smith, uh, who's been also injury prone, been he lost his job before to injury? Guess what? Kirk Cousins, that man took shots and got right the fuck up and learned from it, and we watched him learn and grow as a player. Uh, yeah, yeah. L let's see. I'm rooting for him. I love. I like Alex Smith. I do. But you know, let's see. Let's see if Alex Smith uh, is vastly better than Kirk Cousins, and he's going to take this football team to the next level, uh, having the same exact football team as freaking Kirk Cousins had. 
Yeah, I'm waiting to see that. I can't wait to see people wish they had Kirk Cousins back. Um, now, another thing, um, I said in my last video, I said that I was going to make a video talking about this because I, I really did believe it. Uh, I, and if, if you go back and watch my last video, I, I said I was contemplating about making this video and I, n I never got around to it. And I was actually going to make a video all centered around... I believe this season, this upcoming season, was all going to revolve around how good Darius Geis uh, performed. I, I thought that this season could, as a whole could kind of be, you know, combined together and, and thought of as how well will this football team do depends on how well Darius Geis has of a season because we need that run game to propel our offense. And now that Darius Geis is gone... I'm going to flip that. I'm going to flip that. Now I'm going to say this season is all going to revolve around Ryan Anderson. Why Ryan Anderson? Because the, either we're going to see Ryan Anderson come out and be the same bum motherfucker on the field as we've seen. Or Ryan Anderson's going to take that next step. And then he's going to be making plays. And his defense is going to step up. And the, the defense is going to lead this football team. That's how we're going to win this year. As if this defense is the strength of our football team. So, let's see. Keep your eye on Ryan Anderson. Does he make the next step? Does he show up and make us proud? Or is he going to be the same guy who has more highlights as playing a fucking fullback last year than his actual fucking position? I think that's what it's going to come down to. Keep your eyes on Ryan Anderson. Is he, is he going to show up? Um, <clears throat> I mean, dude. Did you see Jay Gruden at the press conference? The man's basically tearing up. And he says he doesn't know whether he's doing stuff wrong. He feels like this is all his fault. All these injuries and stuff. There, there's nobody that wants to win more than Jay Gruden. There's nobody that wants to make his his family more proud than Jay Gruden. Nobody wants to take this shitty football team and make him a winning organization more than Jay Gruden, dude. And he deserves it, dude. And what we need is for other coaches to do their fucking job. How is Mac Brown not on this fucking football team right now? I don't. It blows my fucking mind. It blows my mind. And I, I guess I'm not going to keep this video going. I'm sure there's a lot of other points I wanted to make that I can't remember. Uh, but I got to give a shout out to my man, Daddy Smokes Yams. Um, I saw your comment, dude. He said, B. Militant called it last night, shake my head. He's What he's talking about is I knew from the get-go that Darius Geis was messed up. I knew right away that uh, his ACL was t torn or whatever, his knees torn up. I knew it right, right away. They showed us the – all I needed to see was one – one video on the sideline where they're bending this Darius Geis's knee. They bent this man's knee away. It's not supposed to go, and there's no resistance. And his and his le and his feet are just dangling around like he can't even hold it up, dude. Like that's all I needed to see. I knew instantly. Um. Also, I want to give one more shout out to uh, a guy on Facebook. I don't know uh, if you're here. If you're here and you watch my videos, awesome, dude. Thank you. Also, going back to Daddy Smokes Yams, thank you for actually watching watching my videos, and thank you for actually listening. There's a lot of people that watch, and before they get two minutes into the video, they're typing comments, and they don't even listen to the video. So thank you for actually taking the time to listen. Um, but back to the Facebook post. Um, on the video... He commented on the video of DJ Swearinger talking about the Redskins fans just need to be loyal and telling us what to do, uh, this or that. Um, this guy, Stephen Forrest, uh, don't know if you're here, don't know if you watch the videos. If you do, awesome, thank you. But he says, it's almost as if ticket sales are down and they are telling players to speak out about it. Newsflash, I'm a fan because I want to be, not because a player defines what a true fan is. And I completely agree with him. Uh, sure, I'm not going to sit here and say the organization's telling these players what to say. But the second part of that, I definitely agree with. So, shout out to you for wording that pretty well. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to make this video much longer. Uh, 
It's the second, we haven't even played the second preseason game, and we're losing depth. We're losing depth on this football team. Um, at least if something happens to Alex Smith, we got Colt McCoy. I feel at home with Colt McCoy on the field. Um, and, you know, another thing I was thinking about, man, another thing I was thinking about is if the Redskins are successful anytime soon, if the Redskins go out and they win the Super Bowl or something anytime soon, it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty. You know how that's going to happen? With players like Ryan Anderson stepping up. With people like uh, Fat Rob having a breakout year. When everybody doubts him. When everybody thinks, oh, he doesn't have, he lacks vision. Yeah, uh, he has nowhere to fucking run, bro. What do you want him to do? Do you, how do you not remember? How many times this man has been before he's even handed the fucking football. He's, there's motherfuckers on him. And he throws them off. And tries to get two, three yards when he's hit six yards behind the fucking line of scrimmage. It blows my mind. You guys have such a small attention span sometimes, man. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. But going back to what I was saying, if this football team is successful anytime soon and we do, like, you know, win the Super Bowl or something like that, it's going to be one of those great stories. It's going to be one of those amazing stories. Alex Smith goes down and gets hurt in the third game of the season, and Colt McCoy comes in and has a fucking phenomenal fucking year, blows everybody's fucking mind. Rob Kelly has almost 2,000 fucking yards rushing. Ryan Anderson becomes the best player on our fucking defense. It's going to be something like that. Blows all of our fucking minds. And it's going to be even better. It's, it's going to be even better uh, of a feeling if that were to happen and, and you know we won the Super Bowl or something like that having one of those weird odd you know nobody foreshadowed it type of seasons and unfortunately you know uh, if, if this team is successful anytime soon we don't have the roster all right so it's it's gonna be have to, it's gonna have to be like I just explained to you uh, also one last point before I get out of here going back to Jay Gruden Nobody wants to win more than, than that man. But I have a feeling in order for Jay Gruden to be successful in the, in the NFL, he's going to have to pull a Kirk Cousins. He's going to have to go somewhere else, man. This organization just doesn't know what, what they're doing from the top down. And uh, unfortunately, you know, it's looking like Jay Gruden's, you know, got shit on his plate that he can't handle because who could handle it? Who could handle it? I don't understand. I don't know who. Beats my mind. Uh, he's doing the best he can, man. And hopefully, uh, hopefully people step up. Hopefully Byron Marshall. Hopefully we get to see Capri Bibbs. We have running backs, man. Our issue is we can't run block. And another reason, another reason why a bunch of you, I know a bunch of you guys are going to be on the, oh, you think Maurice Harris is better than Josh Doxon or has more potential than Josh Doxon. Guess what? Maurice Harrison will fucking block, all right? He's not a, he's not one of these guys who, oh, I'm going to run a lazy route and I'm not going to get my 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 hands dirty and shit like that. Maurice Harrison will block. You know what I'm saying? That's what's going to propel this football team. Consistency. Give give Alex Smith someone who's going to catch the football and move the freaking chains and keep the other defense on the field. Not someone who's going to drop game-winning touchdown passes, all right? So that's it. That's my rambling. 20 minutes is good enough. Thank you for watching. Thank you guys for actually listening. Um, hopefully the next video is uh, a lot more positive. I'm going to make a next video for uh, the next preseason game. So I'll see you guys soon, Thursday. Thank you guys for watching. Hail to the Redskins. Hopefully I'm up here smiling next time. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Fire Bruce Allen. Peace. I have no reason to tell you we're not a playoff team. We've got a great leader at the quarterback spot. We've got a, co a coach who's seasoned now. We've got a team that experienced some things over the last few years, some highs and lows. Uh, I think everybody everybody has is to a point now where we know what to expect. I think we've got a good team. Yes, we have some young players, but I'll tell you what, I wouldn't be surprised if we were in the Super Bowl.